Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew, and we are the IB English Guys. Folks, we've been getting a lot of questions from teachers around the world, and they're asking about the units that we teach and how we design our two-year course for our students. So we wanted to take some time today and take you through our thinking and give you some options when you're planning your curriculum as well. Yeah, it's a good time for like the beginning of the school year for us, and we want to think about like what's our what's our game plan for this two-year program. Again, we've been teaching together for a long time. We've taught we both taught the course many times, so this is our current current our current choices that we've made with with you know ideas about you know really designing a powerful course uh, for our students. Uh, I would say though that we do change text quite frequently depending on the kids in the room. We really try to look at who's sitting in front of us and design a course for them. Uh, Jaws, what are some of the underpinnings about what we think about when we're building a course? Yeah, I think, first of all, the foundation is what I talked about last week. The foundation is is really thinking about these areas of exploration. I like the areas of exploration. They're easy to understand and they're very important. We want to always think about readers, writers, and text, the way writers are communicating through their text to their readers. We also want to think about text and context and how the context of a text is really so important, the time and the place. And of course, we also want to do the fun of just intertextuality, the way texts talk to each other. So these are the foundations of all of our units we're going to be talking about. Uh, lastly, I would say, regardless of the text we're working with, literary or non-literary, we're always thinking about sort of building better people. We're looking at some of the key themes and issues that affect our society today, and we're constantly looking at real-world problems and applying these texts to those problems and trying to find solutions. So, Jaws, what do you say we just jump right in, and what do we uh, what do we start with year one, semester one? Yeah, our first our first uh, unit is about race, poverty, and social justice, and I think this was a very intentional choice. It's just thinking about in, the importance of talking about about inclusion, talking about diversity, and and, and again, having an author that's a female and a person of color, um, Jasmine Ward Singh and Buried Singh is absolutely accessible and so powerful. I, I love the text. I love the text as well. And starting with that text, we find that we hook students in immediately because the issues are so provocative and so engaging. We're talking about things like racial inequality. We're talking about police profiling. We're talking about corrupt justice systems. There's drug abuse, parental neglect. Kids get into this text in a hurry, and as Mr. Giles says, it's accessible, but it's also very rich in yeah. terms of literary choice. And it's kind of like you said. It was like we're trying to build better people. We're trying to think about this idea of showing empathy for others, so that's important. We also, our next unit, we, we, we live in Asia, and we want to think about, we wanted to have an Asian voice right away, and so we also wanted to do film. So the films of Bong Joon-ho really were so powerful. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to introduce visual literacy early in the course. Uh, teachers, you know how important this skill is for paper one, for the individual oral, and just for life in general, being to decode and unpack visual messages. So we use Parasite as our anchor text, and then we also use the other films of Bong Joon-ho as a choice board. Uh, we really love his films because they're so rich in symbolism uh, the set design is very intentional and very clever. Tons of choices to talk about. What are some of the issues that we talk about, Mr. Giles? Well, if you look at a variety of films, not only Parasite, but also Okja, you can talk about, you know, the idea of genetic engineering. You can talk about science and the way and corporate ethics. So it's really interesting. I think he really is addressing a lot of powerful things. So our students have really benefited from that greatly. Yeah, the third unit we look at is something that's unique to our teaching context. Uh, we love TED Talks, and we think it's really important that our students are able to stand up and speak publicly. That's a skill we want our graduates to leave with. Can you talk a little bit about our TED unit, Mr. Giles? Yeah, I, I love the TED unit. I think it really teaches the, the power of rhetoric and using persuasive language. It's also, again, Ha embedded in that unit is student choice, where the students are choosing their own topic to research. But we also, in the process, look at that text type of speeches and look at transcripts of speeches and actually watch speeches and listen to them, including, uh, obviously, TED Talks by Bill Gates and other great uh, yeah, speakers. Yeah, I was going to say, we do include a full body of work with uh, the speeches of Bill Gates. However, that's not really our goal here. We're trying to get the kids some really solid skills that, you know, it's not a clear match to the IB program, but it's a clear match to our belief system, and we believe it's worth exploring this topic. Yeah. That kind of takes us to semester two, Mr. Giles. Yeah, one. right. Semester two, again, we wanted to have another Asian writer, so we have uh, Arundhati Roy from South Asia, and we really wanted to talk about belonging and otherness. Uh, and really looking at some of the topics that she talks about. I think um, The God of Small Things, again, is just a literary uh, masterpiece, has so many incredible authorial choices to talk about, but the themes are powerful. 
Yeah, and if you think about, you know, in our other, you know, we sort of introduced the Marxist lens when we're looking at the films of Bong Joon-ho. This gives us an opportunity to talk about the post-colonial lens when we're looking at India and post-colonial literature, God of Small Things. It's a great text, Mr. Giles. One of my, I think it's one of my all-time favorites, actually. Yeah, that's great. And it's great to unpack. It works for the I.O. and it's super, I think it's super effective. So then we follow that with a unit on advertising and PSAs. And what I love about this unit, it's one of, my, again, one of my favorite units. Um, I probably say that for all the units, but uh, this unit, again, has an incredible uh, choice board of, of ad campaigns that, that create just a great sort of like tapestry of, of just powerful ads. Yeah, we kind of, we go through a we go, you go approach. We take one ad campaign and we show the kids, we build those strong visual skills that we give them some opportunities to explore campaigns that we've curated for them, but they do all the heavy lifting, as Mr. Giles would say. Yeah. They do all the thinking. Uh, we actually do a nice creative activity there where we do an advertising pitch. It is super fun and kids are getting tons of skills. Yeah, and then, then we pivot and we look at uh, a collection of short stories called The, uh, the Things They Carried. I know it's widely taught. This, there was a reason why it's widely taught. Again, this, this text is awesome, Giles. I, I, I rarely find a kid who doesn't like this text. Yeah, me too. I, I, that, that, again, that's why I just keep going back to the things they carried because so many students love it. Um, everything on our, on our choices and on all of our units is something students like. Uh, it's got the power of storytelling. It's got metafiction. And, of course, it's talking about war. And again, that's uh, I think that's clearly a strong global issue that that resonates with yeah, uh, with all of them. This really hits home for us. We have a lot of students here that are in ROTC programs. We have Korean students or Israeli students on the verge of doing military duty. Uh, this is a really impactful unit, and, and we really enjoy that. Yeah. We then follow this up by a unit in photography, sort of to end year one. Can you talk about that a little bit, Giles? Yeah, again, it, it's working on those visual literacy skills. And again, the photography, a lot of the photography we choose relates directly to all of the, the literary works that we've studied. Again, we have war photography, we have photography, you know, created uh, from from India. We have look at a whole variety of photographers. It's that, a really nice culmination of the whole year where we start looking at different images and how they match up to the different literary units we've done. It's it's pretty spectacular. And again, that's a unit, I hate to say it, kids love it. Yeah. yeah. So um, a little bit more briefly, we'll go through year two. Uh, we study uh, Antigone. We're currently doing that now where, again, we needed to look at a different time period. But what I love about Antigone is just how relevant the themes are. They're just so relevant to modern day. Yeah, we're leveraging chat GTP right now, and we're really looking for some creative ways to innovate and really help kids learn independently. These are seniors now. These are grade 12 students, so we're trying to get them on the verge of independence, knowing that university is just around the corner. That's right. And the unit after that is political cartoons. Again, this is one of our favorites. It's great for it's great for paper one skills, but it's also really great for the I.O., which is coming for us because we choose to do the I.O. in the second year. So, I, again, it's very important for us to cover that political cartoon unit because it's going to address issues of gender. It's going to talk about war. It's going to talk about social justice. So all of these global issues that we've covered in previous units will be in the political cartoon. Yeah, we find that our students really enjoy picking political cartoons for their I.O. because, as Mr. Giles said, there's just so many different there's so many issues to work with. It's very easy to match that up to different texts that we've studied. Yeah. And uh -huh. then optimistically, we want to we want to teach Frankenstein. This is a new text for both of us. And I think Frankenstein, again, is a classic work, but it's a work that just has so much relevance to talk about the unintended consequences of science, uh, which, again, pairs really nicely with Black Mirror as as a possible body of work to use um, in conclusion. Yeah, in the past, that. we've also used Oryx and Crake in this spot as well. The idea is that we have a lot of students that enjoy talking about science and technology, and as teachers, we must give them access to talk about their passion. So we really want to have a text that allows us to do that, and both Frankenstein and Oryx and Crake uh, fit the bill there. Yeah, we have two dramas to kind of conclude our curriculum. The first is Death and the Maiden. Again, the reason this keeps coming back for us is because students find it so provocative and interesting. I also really love how innovative this this play is and how many things there are to talk about. Uh, I also love Death and the Maiden. Uh, the first time I read it, I was absolutely blown away, Giles. It's a text you introduced to me. And I, again, I just, the conversations we have around these issues in this text are absolutely fascinating. Uh, Giles, talk about Seizwe Bonzi is Dead. This is another text you introduced to me, having previously lived in Africa. Yeah, we, we wanted to have, again, we wanted to have a text from, from Africa. And this, this particular text from South Africa teaches a lot about the context of apartheid, but also just about the, the struggle that this, these characters are having to, 
to kind of manage, um, you know, all the discrimination they're facing during the apartheid era. So again, this this is also an avant-garde play with so many interesting, unconventional dramatic techniques that fit so perfectly with Paper 2, which is kind of around the corner for these kids. So. Yeah, one thing I'd like to mention, you may notice that you don't see poetry explicitly on our curriculum. Uh, I'd like to just say that we do address poetry, but rather than looking at one poet in one body of work, we tend to bring in poems that match thematically to these units as we go. So we're constantly exploring poetry as it relates to our units, so kids do get a rich experience there. Giles, any closing thoughts? Yeah, just like, again, this is just our, our snapshot of what, what we offer in our two-year course. Again, I, I think what's important is just thinking about a simple way to communicate that with students, with guiding questions for each unit, also addressing global issues, um, and just trying to think about what skills we're going to cover in those units. So this is, this is kind of the, the format that we came up with. And I'm excited for the for the two years ahead. Me too. Folks, uh, teachers out there, students as well, we hope you enjoy this video. We hope this gives you some ideas about we, how we construct our course. Uh, and hopefully you'll have some ideas to make a great course uh, for your students and their unique needs as well. Uh, thanks for watching the channel. Keep the questions coming and we'll see you next time.